Good afternoon. I'm 41 meteorologist Kim Adams. It's a beautiful day with temps in the upper 60s to right around 70. But we have a chance of storms tomorrow, some of which could be severe. We'll talk about it coming up. Breaking first at four, criminal charges against a former speaker of the Michigan House. How the attorney general says he cheated to live a lavish lifestyle. Detroit's mayor is celebrating another turnaround that's paying off for residents who stuck around. Well, this is a day that I never thought I would see. And wait until you see the numbers. Paula. And wait until you see this. Take a look right here. Helping hands, creating comfort. Our go for it big picture project is already underway. I'll show you why these blankets give peace, healing, and more to courageous families who choose the gift of life. These stories and more are happening right now on Local 4, first at 4. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First of four, we do have breaking news about criminal charges against former Michigan House Speaker Lee Chatfield. Attorney General Dana Nessel just outlined several counts involving financial crimes, but has now closed a sexual assault case. Kimberly Gill joins us from the newsroom, and Kim, the Attorney General, outlined a pretty sweeping case on those financial crimes. Yes, Karen, good afternoon to you. The Attorney General says a years-long investigation shows the former Republican Speaker of the House used money from a political nonprofit to take trips and make purchases he could not have afforded on his lawmaker's salary. Right now, it's important to point this out. These are just allegations, and Chatfield will get his day in court. Now, the attorney general revealed those charges during a news conference that started just after 2 p.m. Dana Nessel, a Democrat, has charged Chatfield with 13 counts, including conducting a criminal enterprise and embezzlement from a nonprofit. She also says Chatfield's wife, Stephanie, faces a few of the same charges for her alleged involvement in those schemes. Nestle says many of the transactions she believes are illegal centered around a nonprofit called the Peninsula Fund. To date, our investigation has uncovered evidence that Lee Chatfield used various different schemes to embezzle, steal, and convert both private and public monies to fund a lavish lifestyle that a state salary could not possibly afford. This included luxury shopping, fine dining, and extended vacations in swanky hotels in various exotic locations. Now, you may recall the investigations swirling around Chatfield started back in 2022 when his sister-in-law, Rebecca, alleged he sexually assaulted her over many years. The attorney general says the investigation into those claims is now closed. Our investigation, though exhaustive, failed to produce evidence to meet proof beyond a reasonable doubt, the standard that must be met in order to bring charges. We commend Rebecca's strength, her bravery, and her courage in stepping forward to tell her story. And her disclosure led to our office's full investigation into allegations of other criminal activity. Were it not for her, we likely wouldn't be here today announcing charges at all. Now, Karen uh, Mar McDonald is also working on this story. She's reaching out to the former speaker for his reaction. We'll have any new information in about 60 minutes when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. For now, though, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thanks, Kim. Sure. Voters in two local special elections will have a huge say in deciding the balance of power in Lansing. The races could help break a tie in the Michigan House that's split 54 to 54 right now between Democrats and Republicans. In District 13, Democrat My Song faces Republican Ronald Singer. In District 25, Democrat Peter Herzberg faces Republican Josh Powell. Those seats were vacated after Kevin Coleman and Lori Stone became the mayors of Westland and Warren. So if you live in those districts, you have a few more hours to cast your ballot. Polls close at 8 p.m. City of Detroit says it has new proof. The city's comeback is not limited to downtown and midtown. It is celebrating huge growth in housing wealth, especially for black and Latino homeowners. A new report from the University of Michigan shows housing-related wealth in Detroit jumped from $4 billion to $8 billion between 2014 and 2022. It also found values almost tripled among in the lowest tier of property values. In 2014, the lowest median range for home values was from $7,500 to $26,000. That range is now twenty-eight dollars to $115,000. The report found the city's black homeowners have boosted their wealth by nearly $3 billion alone. $3 billion in added home wealth reflects a giant leap for those who remain in the city of Detroit. And the next time you hear somebody say, 
everything happens in downtown and midtown, you can tell them the University of Michigan study gives you four billion reasons to say that is not true. Mayor Duggan says a lot of the credit for the increase goes to the land bank for selling 16,000 vacant homes to new owners. Plus, he is also thanking block clubs and neighborhood associations for improving the values of their own communities. The NFL draft, another sign of the city's rise in the national spotlight. Today, the league tells us preparations for the big event are moving forward and on schedule. Construction on the draft theater started March 29th, and you can see it's coming a lot together really well there on Monroe Street. We're told the shell of the theater has come together nicely, and this week, crews are adding the production elements, including some 50 million LED pixels that will be part of the big show. The NFL says there's room for plenty of spectators. But thousands of fans should be able to enjoy it right in front of the theater, through Campus Marshes, down Cadillac Square as well. And we'll also have some viewing screens throughout the rest of the footprint, particularly down at Draft Experience uh, presented by Rocket Mortgage. So fans that are enjoying some of our interactive elements and sponsor activations can also keep an eye on the clock and the, and the picks come as they come in in real time. By the way, after all the work to build the theater, the NFL says it will take another two weeks to dismantle everything once it's over. The NFL draft kicks off next Thursday, April 25th. As we head into the first forecast, here is a live look at the NFL draft stage as it is coming together. NFL hoping the weather obviously continues to cooperate. It looks great now. Changes are coming, so let's head over to Kim Adams for a preview. Well, right now it's dry and it will remain dry throughout the rest of the evening. So if you have outdoor plans, things like that, you're totally fine tonight. Overnight tonight, we'll get one round of rain, but it's the second round in the afternoon and evening that could contain some strong to severe thunderstorms. So the SPC Storm Prediction Center has placed us under a slight risk. This is up a level from yesterday for much of Metro Detroit. This is a level two out of the five levels and then up around I-69 and northward, it's a marginal risk, which is one level lower. What we expect tomorrow afternoon and evening between about three and seven would be high winds, the possibility of large hail, flooding is a low threat, but tornadoes will be possible within those supercells. So we'll talk more about the timing and also what's ahead for the rest of the week coming up. All right. Thanks, Kim. Former President Donald Trump is spending another day in a New York courtroom for jury selection in his so-called hush money trial. Trump continues to post complaints online about the judge and a gag order in the case, which has failed to stop his commentary. More prospective jurors have been questioned and dismissed. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records to allegedly cover up payments to an adult film actress, Stormy Daniels. Jury selection could take up to two weeks. Warmth, generosity, and gratitude. Those feelings are part of a remarkable event in Ann Arbor where volunteers are creating something really special right now. It's all part of the sharing the gift of life with others. And we're hoping it inspires you to take part in our next Go For It event. Paula Tubman joins us to explain exactly how it works. Paula, this is some great news. It yeah, it really is. I mean, this is this kind of goosebump kind of stuff. I mean, we've all probably seen, or at least most of us have probably seen these kinds of blankets. Many of us may have even made these blankets. You know what? They're very easy. They take very little effort. It doesn't take a lot, but oh my gosh, it is incredibly meaningful to so many families. I never washed them. I never, from the day I got them, well, when I departed from my baby, I kept them. Amari was only on this earth for five brief months. Passion Wilson checked on her sleeping infant, seemingly before sudden infant death syndrome completely stole him. He was like limp, but he was still warm. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I called for dad. He came running upstairs, started CPR. We calling 911, I'm crying, screaming. Paramedics were able to resuscitate Amari. They got a heartbeat. You're going through this whole process. Yeah. And what are you thinking? Nothing. Blank. You just a blank? Yeah, like a sheet of paper with no lines. Keeping him breathing was not enough to save him, but it gave his parents the opportunity to breathe themselves long enough to make the decision to save someone else's infant. They donated Amari's organs. The decision a fairly easy one. They knew what the gift of life uh -huh. means because Passion's so own sister where... had become a recipient of a kidney just a few years prior. My kidneys went to complete failure. Um, both of them shut down and I was in need of a kidney transplant. Growing up, that was um, somebody helped my family, you know? 
even though it was a living in Oregon, donor, and it was her family, it's like, it's still somebody helped my family. So it was only right. Amari's heart valves went to an infant 11 years ago. The pain of his death bubbles up quickly, even now. And what gives his family comfort? Well, many things, including the comfort blanket, Gift of Life Michigan placed on Amari before he passed away. The blanket is one of the last things that he received. He was able to be cuddled with that blanket. Everybody that came to visit him saw him with that blanket on him. Um, and it's just one of the last gifts that he could give his family as well. It might just look like a blanket at first glance. It is anything but, anything but. And that was a, a keepsake for me, you know? And I never washed them or nothing. I put them in the bag. So they still got the, his smell, if I want to smell them. All my little stuff I got. Yeah, Amari's aunt even had uh, his blanket replicated so that it could be in her wedding. It actually walked down the aisle with her. These, this is what's got to be done tonight. Gift of Life Michigan. This is pretty unique to Michigan, by the way. They've got about 40 volunteers coming for about three hours worth of work. But the event we want to have, we want to have many, 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 many more. Stay with us at 5 o'clock. We're going to show you how you as well can get involved in what's involved in making these comfort blankets that are so important to so many families, Karen. It really is. And so, so many different groups can join. I know some of my uh, our soccer teams joined in recently and did that. So it's a great. Nice. It's really cool. You can get the kids. You can get, you know, the grandparents. There's just so many ways you can help out. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear more details. Thanks, Paula. By the way, here is more information on how you can help us go for it. We are holding our own Creating Comfort Blanket Making event. It is Tuesday, April 30th from 12 in the afternoon until 6 in the evening over at the Henry Ford Centennial Library in Dearborn. So it's really easy. You just have to pre-register to attend, and you can do that on our website. Click on Detroit.com. So get a friend or a loved one and help us go for it.